Two years ago, the Regents Insurance Group, a subsidiary of Blue Cross Blue Shield, was facing a significant shift in their corporate business model. HR needed to respond quickly by accurately forecasting and measuring the organization's rapidly changing talent needs. Jan John, Director of Strategic Workforce Planning for the Regents Group, discussed the company's transformation in a recent HCI webcast underwritten by Sipson Consulting. She was joined by Mike Norman, Senior Vice President at Sipson. So first of all, let me set some context or do a little stage setting. SWP in one shape, form, or another has been around for decades. And uh, it would be a fair assumption that most of everyone on this call have some level of experience with strategic workforce planning, whether you're in the planning stage or right in the middle of the throes of implementation. So let's take a little trip backwards and talk for a moment around the evolution of strategic workforce planning. First of all, 15 years ago or so, I was head of human resource management and planning for a company of about 75,000 employees. And every month, we were asked to do headcount exercises and put into a report the number of people in positions, the number of positions, and roll that up to the corporate head office in terms of information requests from the executive. It was a tactical exercise focused on headcounts, oriented towards budget, and really not linked to strategic discussions. In my experience, personally, and as we've seen the evolution of strategic workforce planning, it tended to be tactical and seemed to be more of an affordability exercise, which is not all that bad. But the shortcoming of some of its original implementation was that it failed to proactively address evolving and strategic people needs to drive the business. So what's caused us to make those kinds of changes that we talked about? And so I thought we'd start with where we were in 2008. And I'm not sure what those of you on the phone have been or are facing, but this is just a small representation of the challenges we were facing. And these problems definitely required a new approach. So with pending legislation and some of the other issues I just mentioned, these are the types of questions our senior leaders pose to our organization and specifically to HR. So we were wondering, how are we going to know which roles are most and least critical to drive the results we need? What are the capabilities that we have or that we're going to need to be ready? How are we going to predict and know what those implications are for the internal workforce in terms of what we will promote or hire from within? And how can we better anticipate what's going on in the external labor market? I wanted to show you a brief timeline of our highlights and also some of our lowlights that we faced along our journey. First, what a blessing it was to get consulting help, as I mentioned. I had researched several firms and based on the work done with previous clients and their approach, we selected Sibson. You'll also see we built internal capability into the process. We set up pilots along the way so we could crawl before we had to um, walk or run. And as I found out, SWP isn't only about times of growth. That might have been nice, but fortunately or, or unfortunately, as the case may be, from a personal growth experience, I also learned how we could use strategic workforce planning in the midst of layoffs and some loss of business. You know, when we were looking for a consultant, we knew we need some of the following, certainly expertise. And we were looking for people who had a, cre had a credible track record, and we found that in some of the research that we did on Sibson. We also needed to move fast. If our CEO is like many of yours on the call, our CEO didn't get his position by missing deadlines. And I wasn't about to miss any of ours either. And so with all the change ahead, I knew time was of the essence. And we needed someone that we could rely on to help us deliver in the time frame we needed. We also had to be able to transfer capability. 
And as I sometimes joked with Mike, as much as I liked consultants, I didn't want them setting up a permanent home up here with geraniums in the windowsill. I wanted to be able to learn from them, be able to apply it, and then use them as I needed, but not to have them take up shop here forever. I want to talk a little bit about the Sibson approach, and Mike, feel free to chime in on this one as well, because this is what your whole business is built on, on this particular area. But we did look at several different models, from ones that were very simple to some that were complex. We like the approach that Sibson had, which is shown here. And in the middle of the slide, the blue box of business strategy, we knew that was going to be essential, needing to really be clear on the business strategy before we bounced into workforce planning. When I mentioned strategic roles in the previous slide, one of the other things we were looking for was how to segment our workforce. You know, what did a differentiated workforce really mean? And I appreciated this from Sibson because it helped challenge our leaders to think of our talent as a portfolio of assets. You know, it made such sense because we had a portfolio of products, we had a portfolio of projects, a portfolio of clients, but we'd been slow to think about our human capital as a portfolio of assets. Okay? So again, looking at the current landscape and what preceded us on our journey, I thought it'd be important to also share with you some of our lessons learned. And I have oodles of them, but I'm going to just try to capture some of our favorites in the next few minutes. You know, I mentioned earlier piloting, and we piloted with three different divisions. And to mix things up, we picked a large one recommended by the CEO, a small one, under, and then one that was going under a lot of change. That way we thought we could test SWP and Vault in uh, various situations while we still had our consultants, you know, partnering with us close, to, close by. And yes, timing is everything. Um, I wish I could hear your responses on the phone, but I wonder how many of you know what the Bohica syndrome is. And if you're in HR, you should know it because that's one of the things that business areas are likely to say when they hear things like, HR is here to help, or we have a new initiative being launched through HR. Bohica simply stands for bend over, here it comes again. And believe me, as we started this, we had our resident cynics lining up. So we also had to deal with what we call the ugly baby syndrome. You probably know it better by thinking about if you've ever seen an ugly baby, you had the good graces to not tell the new mom that that was an ugly baby. And the reason is because we knew people would feel bad. Well, in some of our pilots, when they heard they'd been selected, they felt as if they'd done, had done something wrong or that our CEO was calling them an ugly baby. Where we are, we are where we should be. Mike said that to me on more than one occasion. Jan, relax. You are where you should be. And that was one of those nice things about having the Sibson Lifeline consulting call every so often because it just kept helping us focus on the business strategies. We knew if we kept focusing on the strategies, we'd be clear and we would not be wasting effort. So we wouldn't be focusing just on activity, but we'd be focusing on impact. And as you'll see on this slide, we did roll it out 19 divisions. We had over 105 leaders involved, which was huge to get a lot of our senior and senior manager, upper management people involved in this. So people all got their hands into it, got their fingers in the pot, if you will. And through this, we've already written 35 talent requirements, which is a critical piece um, that I won't go into at this point, but I will take questions on it if you want later on. And we had about 8% of our workforce that uh, roles that were identified as strategic. And we have several enterprise actions, such things around some of our sourcing strategies, some of our retention strategies, are things that instead of doing it for one division and then having an HR partner in a different division trying to create something else, we were like, this makes no sense at all. What are the main things that we need to be focusing on that the whole division, can, the whole enterprise can benefit from? 